Lord, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisai. We help to die. He's Yahweh. He's Alpha. He's Omega. He's the first. He's the last. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's everything that we need this evening, and we give Jesus all of the glory. We give Jesus all of the honor. We give Jesus all of the praise. Truly from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, he deserves to be glorified. He deserves to be magnified. He deserves to be edified. He deserves to be exalted. He's our heart picture, our mind regulator, our door opener. Jesus is everything that we need, and we humble ourselves this evening, and we exalt the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and his name is Jesus. Now, he's done all our Father this evening. We come, giving you all the glory, giving you all the honor, giving you all the praise, magnifying, edifying, glorifying, and exalting you, King of Kings. But, Father, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be magnified. Jesus, you are worthy to be exalted. Now, we repent this evening of all sin. All iniquity, all ungodliness, all unholiness, all unrighteousness, everything we've done, said, thought, imagined, Father, that would keep you from getting the glory. We repent of it right now. But Holy Spirit, we invite you in our midst. Touch everyone under the sound of my voice this evening. Release a fresh anointing, a fresh oil, and a fresh fire. Now, Father God, bind Satan and every spirit of the adversary that won't give you glory this evening. Bind them now. Release a standing against it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, and for his namesake, sir, we decree and we declare it. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You are a son of God. Yes, he is. You're bigger than all my problems. Yes. That means he does what he wants when he wants to. However he wants to, wherever he wants to. That's what sovereign means. To do exceedingly, abundantly. He is able to do abundantly, exceedingly, above all. Give him some glory this evening. He deserves all the glory. 
We deserve all the honor. We deserve all the praise. We deserve to be glorified and magnified. You know something? Jesus wants it all. He don't want some of it, but he wants all of it. He don't want it some of the time, but he wants it all the time. In the silence. They will love him. They will give him their all. He wants it all. And a God that walks over the earth. He's looking, he's searching for a heart that's desperate. That will give it all. He wants it all. And he says, love me, love me with your whole heart. He wants it all today. Serve me, serve me with your mind now. He wants it all today. Bow down, let go of your idol. He wants it all. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all. There is a God. They want so good here. He's searching for a heart that's desperate. Longing. That we'll give it there. I'll give it all. He wants it all. And he says, love me. Love me with your He wants it all today. Bow down before me and let go of your idols. Jesus, he wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all. All today. All of you, all of you. He don't want some of you, but he wants all of you. He wants it all of you. He wants it all right now. Not next week, not next month. He wants all of you, all of you. Wants it all today, today, today. We just surrender it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. There's a voice. There's a voice that cries out in the silence. Searching for a heart that is they love him. They will love him for a child. They will give it their all. Give it all. He wants it. He wants it all. Come on, let's give him some glory. He don't want some, but he wants all of it. He don't want bits and pieces of it, but he wants all of it. He don't want it every now and then, but he wants all of it. He don't want us to think about love and we want us to live to it. But he wants all of it. He wants it in the morning. He wants it in the evening. He wants it in the noonday. He wants it in the nighttime. He wants every bit of it. He wants us to surrender our hearts, our minds, our souls, and our bodies completely to him. And I see your glory. I want to see your glory. Not some of the time. But all the time. Yes. Have you ever told God you just want to see his glory? Just who you are. Yes. Yes. You're the one that sets me free. I stand in awe and shocked. I'm surprised at what you've done. And what you will always be. Yes. Bow down.
is awesome. Savior of the whole world, healer of salvation, by his stripes I am here. My God is awesome, today I am forgiven. His grace is why I'm living. Praise his holy name. My God. Jesus heals. Heals. In the morning, heals. In the new day, Jesus heals. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. He is awesome. He opened up. 
A door. Are you looking for the open a door?
as we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory, all the glory, and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless your Lord. For you are, you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. No one like Jesus. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, nobody, there is no one else like you, no one like the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, no one like Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nishan, the Lord and the other. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. That's what we're here for. As we bless your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. And the honor. Lord, we lift our hands for your healing anointing, for your delivering anointing, for your fire and your holy ghost. For you are great. And we shall 
I'm strength.
belongs to the people. Belongs to the people. Yes. Now tonight. But what God is about to do, hallelujah, Holy Spirit. So begin to praise Him in your prayer language. Begin to give Him glory in your prayer language. It's okay to do the music sometimes, but we need to personally glorify, edify, magnify, and exalt the name of Jesus. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nishan, El Shaddai, Robo Shanda Rabba Baba. We bless you tonight, Jesus. We exalt you tonight, Holy Spirit. We honor you tonight, Father. We bow tonight to give you all the glory. We bow tonight to give you all the honor. We say fresh fire tonight. Fresh oil tonight and a fresh anointing. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah, King of Kings. We exalt you, Holy Ghost. We exalt you, Holy Spirit. We adore you, Holy Ghost, tonight. We honor you tonight, Holy Spirit. We worship you tonight, Holy Ghost. For thou art worthy of the glory. We bless your healing anointing tonight. We thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles tonight. We honor you this evening, Jesus Christ. For there is none like you. We adore you tonight, Jesus, for there is none like you tonight. We glorify you tonight, Heavenly Father. Jehovah Child, Jehovah Nisha. We worship you on your throne tonight. We praise you for a fresh anointing. We praise you for a fresh oil. We praise you for a fresh fire. We honor you tonight, Father. We know that no one can anoint us like you anoint us. We know that no one can increase us like you increase us. We know that no one can enlarge us like you enlarge us. Tonight we give you all the glory. Tonight we give you all the honor. Tonight we give you all the praise. Tonight we glorify you at your kingdom. We honor you at your throne tonight. We bow before you and reverence your glory. We bow before you and reverence your anointing tonight. We bow before you and reverence your authority tonight. For you have all power and all authority tonight. And we humble ourselves and we give you all the glory for all the power and all the authority that you have tonight. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. Fresh oil, fresh fire, and a fresh anointing. Fresh impartations and fresh activations. Tonight. We increase and intensify the authority in this house tonight. Satan have no power. Satan have no authority. But we know God that you have all power. And we know God that you have all authority. And we glorify you tonight. We magnify you tonight. We edify you tonight, Jesus. For thou art worthy of the glory. Abba, Baba, Shabbat. You're worthy of the honor tonight. We reverence you, Jehovah Jireh. We reverence you, El Shaddai. All glory belongs to you. All honor belongs to you. All praise belongs to you. And we bless you this evening, Father. We say hallelujah. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, El Shaddai. Hallelujah, Elohim. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah, Prince of Peace. Hallelujah, Jehovah Nisha. Hallelujah, El Shaddai. We 
the hand of God touching some of you. Get ready because here he comes. Here he comes. You want to know what he touched you to? Just receive. Just receive. Fresh impartation. He's passing me now. Just receive. I see him touching some of you already. Just receive. He's pouring out the fire right now upon you. Just receive. Let's take it all. Just receive the impartation. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus, just receive it. Just receive. Fire be upon you now, each and every one of you. Fresh. Fresh. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. A shift in the mind. Fresh impartation. Come on, let's give him some glory. He deserves all the glory tonight. We're not rushing him. We're not rushing him. I'm going to give the impartation. I know the word is important, but I want you to give the impartation also. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is still pouring. I see the bucket of the anointed as it tilted over this now. As I'm glancing at the heavens, I see the anointed coming down. Here he comes again, just receive. Just receive it. Just receive it, he's still pouring the anointed. 
Lord, I pray for you, 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 Lord, I pray And here comes your blessing. I saw that when the heavens is open, just receive, just reach up and receive it. It belongs to you, not Apostle Space. I see the one that heaven open. And I see God pouring out. I see God pouring out. Just receive it. Just receive it. He's pouring it. He's pouring it. He's pouring it. Just take it. There it is. He's pouring it. He's pouring it. He is pouring it. Out of that shut down. I mean, it's just pushing down. It's just pushing down. Out of that shut down. Just receive it. It belongs to you now, Apostle Spates. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Fresh fire and a fresh anointing. If you can see the window, you ought to be able to feel the impartation. I said, if you can see those windows open, you ought to be able to feel the impartation. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, here comes a supernatural anointing. I heard the Lord say supernatural. Supernatural. Here it comes. Just receive it.
I'm trying to shoot from this place, but it's like it's holding us right here. Hallelujah. All the glory belongs to Jesus. He knows just what you need. in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. You find that in Philippians, the second chapter, in the fifth verse. When you have it, say amen. And it reads as following, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him a form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise tonight for this, your word. Magnify, edify, glorify, and exalt you. For you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Now, Father, we ask you to take this word tonight, plant as a seed sown in good soil, that you would get all the glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. 
And for his name's sake, we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Tonight we know that Jesus had the mind of the Father. Jesus had the mind of God. Jesus was the walking word manifested. He was the walking word of the kingdom of God. The word says let, very, very important that we let things take place in our lives. It's very, very important that we let certain things happen in our lives. As a believer of the gospel, we have to let the mind of Christ be in each and every one of us. That word let means to give opportunity to. When you let something happen, you give it an opportunity to work for you. Amen. Let means to give opportunity to or to fail or to prevent. So you have an option. You can let Christ in Amen. and you succeed. Or you can let Christ in and you fail. Or you can let Christ in and you prevent certain things from happening in your life. Because that's what let means. It's an opportunity. Or it can be a failure when you let the wrong thing in. Or it can prevent things from happening if you don't let certain things in. Does that make sense? Amen. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. We're not talking about a natural mind. Although I'm going to read some things pertaining to the mind tonight because I want you to have a clear understanding of exactly what the mind is. I'm talking about the M-I-N-D mind. But the M-I-N-D has several meanings. There's two kinds of mind in the M-I-N-D. You have the mind, reconciliation is one mind, meaning to uh, uh, yeah, regu regu uh, regulation, I'm sorry, meaning memory. It means that it is the part of you that memorizes things. But this is not the mind I want to talk about, but I want to share with you how the mind works. So your mind has the ability to memorize because one of the things when you let the mind of Christ be in you, you have to begin to memorize the word of God. You have to begin to memorize the word of the Father. Amen. That word re regulation, direction is the way it says, means uh, trend, uh, let me put my glasses on, means trans qualities of mind. It means religious, Meaning that at a degree, your letting Christ in can be religious. Amen. But we don't want you to be religious when you let Christ in. You've got to be aura, E-A-L. You must be real. Amen. If you're not real, you defeat the very purpose of letting him in. You defeat the very purpose of having the mind of Christ. And one of the things you will find that people that are religious, they don't have the mind of Christ. Amen. Because the word of God is not sown in their spirit. The word of God is not sown in their mind, in their character, and in their intellect. You see where I'm going with this in just a minute. Just bear with me. It also means the actions or the power of recalling to mind. So you see, when you let something in, or when you let the mind of Christ in, there's an action that takes place. That action is you allow the Word of God to shift who you are. You allow the Word of God to change who you are as an individual. Now, when you allow God's Word to change who you are as an individual, a shift takes place. And you find yourself beginning to grow more and more and more 
and more, and you begin to increase in wisdom. You begin to increase in knowledge. You begin to increase in understanding. You begin to increase in revelation of the Word of God because you let the mind of God, which is the Word of God, be inside of you. When you allow God to take place in who you are, He brings about a shift. He brings about a change. Now, we control our own selves. We control our own minds. We do what we feel is necessary. But now catch this. When you let the mind of Christ take control of you, the Word of God will lead you and guide you every day. Amen. When you allow God to take complete control, there will be a shift in who you are. Now let me read it from the verse. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Notice something. He was in the form of the Father. He had the authority of the Father, but he lowered his back. Amen. Amen. The problem of many of us as believers, we don't want to take down. Amen. We don't want to bow down. We don't want to bend down. But when you let the mind of Christ come inside of you, it causes you to take the Lord's seat. It causes you to bow down. It causes you to bend down. And when you bend and when you bow, change can come. The problem with a lot of us as believers is we're high-minded. We're headstrong. And we became in a place of authority. I think I said became right at that point. We've come to a place where we know who we are in Christ. But the problem is we don't know who we are in Christ. Apostle Paul put it this way. Forever learning and never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Meaning that although we're excelling, meaning that although we're advancing, meaning that although we're growing in Christ, we still don't know who we are. It says, also, something we call to mind. Now this is all pertaining to the mind. This is all pertaining to letting the mind of Christ be inside of you. Memory is another part of letting this mind be in you. Because not only must you have a mind, but you must be able to remember things. Amen. What is memory possible? Memory is the power or the process of producing or recalling what has been learned and retained. We learn things and we should retain what we learn. Amen. If we don't retain what we learn, we haven't really learned. In school, they say you have a learning disability. Meaning that you don't learn when you learn. Meaning that you're hearing, but you're not really hearing. Or you're hearing, but you're not really perceiving. Or you're hearing, but you're not really receiving. Now for a second, let me talk about another mind. Because there's more than one. Hold on a second. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I need to go somewhere else right quick. Bear with me just one second here. Turn if you will in your Bibles to Romans. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go to Romans. The first chapter in the 28th verse. Romans 1 and 28 reads as follows. If you had to say amen. Think about the right one. Romans 1, 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their what? Knowledge. 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 God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not what? Convenient. Convenient. Hold on. So see, when you let the mind of Christ come in, that means you've got to obtain the knowledge of God. If you don't want the knowledge of God, well, Apostle, what is the knowledge of God? The knowledge of God is the word of God. Is the wisdom of God. It's the experience after experience after experience that's taking place in the Bible. Every incident, every occurrence that's taking place, that's knowledge. You know, after you gain so much knowledge, you begin to obtain wisdom. Wisdom comes as a result of experiences and knowledge. But he said in this verse, and they, and even as they did not lack, notice something the word there says, they didn't want Many believers don't like God. 
Many believers don't like knowledge. Many believers don't like to hear about the things from the Bible. So what they're actually saying is, I don't want God. Amen. But the word says, let this man be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So what God is saying is, I expect you to shift to where I am. Amen. If you are with me, you're with me all the way. Amen. We can't come in and back out. Amen. We're either all the way in with God or we're all the way out. We either holy or we're unholy. We either saved or we're not saved. We either pure or we're not pure. Now I notice that God purifies us daily. He cleanses us every day. So it's important tonight that we realize and understand that God is bringing a shift in the church. But it's according to his knowledge. It is according to your willingness to obtain his knowledge. It's according to your willingness to let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. When you have the mind of God, the word of God shifts who you are, and the anointing of God increases who you are. So as you change, God can anoint you more. I notice something. You show me somebody to read the word of God, and I'll show you somebody that's full of power. Because the more the word of God you read, the more powerful you become the more authority you have in God because guess what? That word brings wisdom. That word brings knowledge. That word brings revelation. And that word brings power and it brings authority. And when you read the word of God, it takes your spirit, man. Notice something. When you put God's word inside of you, have you ever been reading at night and you all of a sudden got sleepy? The reason is because your body rejects the word of God. So what it says is, you don't need that right now. You need sleep right now. So you get comfortable on the pillow and you lay back in the bed and you say, I'm going to read the word of the Lord and you wake up and the Bible is in your face. <laughs> Why? Because the mind was willing, but the flesh was rejected. So see, when you put the word of God inside of you, what happens is the flesh fights the word. It doesn't want to be it. It doesn't want to bow. But he says in 28, and even as they did not like to retain, that means to grab hold of, God in their knowledge. They didn't want nothing to do with God. It says God gave them over to a reprobate mind. It says, okay, if you either with me or you're not, you can't be both. So we'll shift your mind. Now let me tell you something, saints. When you have a reprobate mind, you have a mind that is not the mind of Christ but the mind of the world. Like a form of godliness. Remember we talking about religion just a minute ago? That's what I was talking about. Turn to Romans chapter 8. Just a few pages over where you are. Give me just a second to get there. Romans 8 verse number 7. Because the carnal mind, do you have to say, man? Because the carnal mind is the enemy against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can what? Be. Be. So there is the mind again. The mind is the enemy of God. Now you got two kinds of minds. You have the spiritual mind, and you have the natural or the carnal mind. The carnal mind is the intimate against God, meaning you don't want to learn anything because it's flesh. The flesh don't want to bend and the flesh don't want to bow. Now, let me give you a good example. Look around for just a second. Now, watch when I say this. How many of you read your word 30 minutes a day? How many of you read your word more than 30 minutes a day? How many of you read your word two hours a day? All right, now, my reason for doing that is this. The more word you put inside of you, the more you shift. So what I'm saying is this. Get yourself a designated time every single day of the week, morning or night. Make that the time you're going to read at least 15 minutes of the Word. Every day at the same time, get your Bible and read 15 minutes. And watch how much you begin to grow. That 15 minutes will begin to turn into 30 minutes. It'll begin to turn into 40 minutes. It'll begin to turn into 50 minutes. It'll begin to turn into an hour. And before you know it, you'll be reading and reading and reading and reading and you won't be able to get enough of it. Because what? 
your spirit man will start being fed and your physical man will be dying. Don't you know every time you feed your, your physical man, your spirit man, the physical man dies. Every time you feed him the word of God, as it, you know the saying goes, feed a cold, spout a fever. Let me say that again. Feed a cold, starve a fever. So, feed your cold, your spirit man, and starve the fever. Your mind. Did you catch that? In other words, it's not what my mind wants, it's what my spirit wants. And what my spirit wants is the word of God, the knowledge of God. Because it's the knowledge of God that saves you at the time when you need God to move the most in your life. It is the word of God that saves you at the time you need God to move and give you a miracle in life. It is the word of God that shifts the situation where you look at it from a divers perspective. You can see the positive in it because you know your faith and trust is in the word of God. Amen. And because God's word works inside of you, you can speak the word on your behalf. Amen. When a storm rises in life, you can decree the word of God on that storm. And when you decree the word of God on that stone, guess what? God has to move. Let me give you a good example. I made a phone call, and I'm sure the woman of God don't mind me sharing this. I made a phone call to a man this week, past week, and I left a message on the phone for him. But I didn't just leave a message in my natural voice, but I left a message in the spirit realm. I said, now, Father, I command him in the name of Jesus to call me back this day. So see, although I'm operating in the natural, I'm operating in the spiritual also. And what I'm saying is you have the power in your body not only to speak it in the natural, but also to speak it in the spiritual. Because God gives you that kind of power and authority when you know his knowledge. Because that that a man thinks, well, I better not get ahead of myself. Let's just get on over there. Turn to Ephesians 4 and uh. 4 and 17, I believe this is what I want. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. I believe this is where I want to go. Let's just see. 4, 17. If you have it, say amen. Is that the one I want? Ephesians 4, 17 and 18. Where am I? I'm in Galatians. Bear with me as I feel. My fingers is doing one thing. 4, 17. And it reads as following. I want to read it to you tonight because I want to kind of break it down a little bit. This I say, therefore, and testify in the name of the Lord, that ye herefore walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of what? In the vanity of their minds. Meaning that I don't want you walking in the natural perspective or in the carnal perspective, but I want you walking in the spiritual perspective. I want you walking in the power and the authority of my word. Because he says in the vanity, meaning that they don't have the wisdom or they're not using the wisdom of the Holy Ghost. They're not using the wisdom and the knowledge of the word of God from the kingdom of God. Then it says having the understanding in verse 18, darkened and being alienated from the life of God through what? Ignorance. Stupidity. So that's what I put it. Ignorance simply means not learned. Ignorance simply means you don't know. So because you don't know, let me tell you something. Knowledge, if you don't hear me say nothing else, please listen to this. Knowledge is power. The more knowledge you have, the more power you have. When people come and say, down, I can act as dumb as I want to act in front of them. But it doesn't mean that I'm dumb. I don't have to show off my intelligence to you, but you have a true deposit space. Why? Because knowledge is power. And the more knowledge you have, the more power and the more authority you have. So the more knowledgeable you are of the word of God, just spiritual things. Now let's look at the worldly things. Because see, you should have balance. Don't just be spiritually minded, but have a balanced mind. Know what's going on in finance. Know what's going on in your mortgage. Know what's going on in this area. You should just read up on stuff just to get the knowledge. Listen to me. 
just to get the knowledge. Not because you ever want to do it, just to get the knowledge. Read up on it for that purpose. Why do you read that? You never do it. I do. I just want the knowledge. Like my wife comes in sometimes, what are you reading now? And I'll keep on reading and sometimes I'll stop and I'll answer. Why? I'm not going to be reading just to be reading. I'm going to be reading just to get the knowledge. And then you can rest sure a few days later, somebody will walk up to me and ask me about that subject. And guess what? I can, with wisdom and knowledge, answer it. Because see, I'm, I'm kind of like a bookworm. Just because I read this, I don't just stop there. I search. I'm going to find out more. Okay, I know this part, but what about this part? Well, what does this word mean? Well, what does that word mean? Well, how do I tie all these words together? That's when you really gain knowledge. Yeah. You're not just looking at one area. So it says, it says there in verse 17, I mean verse 18, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through ignorance. Now notice something. When you don't have knowledge, you don't have life. Amen. Did you catch that? Amen. Do you see that? You're alienating yourself from the life of God. Yes. Meaning the less wisdom of God, the less knowledge of God you have, the less life of God you have. But the more wisdom and the more knowledge of God you have, the more life you have to fight the battles against the enemy. Yes. So when Satan come up with you, come against you with sickness, you got life because you have the scriptures of life inside of you. When he come up against you with, with, with famine and fame and all this ungodly stuff, you've got life because you know what the word says. When somebody comes to you and starts talking crazy, you say, well, I know what you're hearing, but I also know what my Bible says. So you take the Bible over what they're saying in the day, and I guarantee you, you're going to end up victorious. So you've got to let the mind of Christ be in you, or the mind that was in Christ Jesus be also inside of you. Meaning that there's a shift. Listen, saints. The enemy don't want you shifting. Because when you shift, you become a threat. Let me finish this. Ignorance that is in them. Now listen to this. Feeling have given themselves over unto what? Laticanness. To work all uncleanliness with what? Greediness. Notice something. When you give yourself over to ungodliness, greediness comes in. You show me a sinner and I'll show you a greedy person. They want it all for themselves. And when they get that, they still want more. Now, I'm not saying every sinner is that way because of ignorance, they don't know that they can obtain more. See? When you unlearn whether you are saved or unsaved, if you are unlearned, you're still ignorant. You can be poor and ignorant, and you can be rich and ignorant. You can be a sinner and ignorant, you can be saved and ignorant. Amen. It's left up to you. Poor people, we're poor because we like what? Knowledge. Or, we have knowledge, but we choose not to use it. And there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about that too. It says, faith without works is what? Amen. So I don't care how much knowledge you have, you still have got to apply your faith. But there's another scripture that says, if a man don't work, he shouldn't what? He shouldn't eat. So that means if you got wisdom and knowledge to know how to do a job, but you choose not to do a job, you don't deserve a meal. So see, God has something in there for all of us. Slowfulness, he talks about that also. Being slowful, meaning that you can get it done in a timely manner, but you choose to be slowful about getting it done. So when you get there, you get there too late. Please, saints, time matters. With God, time matters. It might not matter to you, but with God, it really matters. That's why I'm always on a time clock. I'm doing, sometimes I'll be out there in the yard working. I think my neighbor saying, I wonder what he got to do next. He's cutting the grass and looking at his watch. He must be going to go do something. Shoot up, I get it done, go in the house, take a shower, and two seconds later, I'm in the car and go. Why? Because I'm observing the importance of time. So one of the things you got to realize and one of the things you have to understand is that God does things based on time. Turn to Psalms, chapter 94, verse 11.
94 verse 11. It's going to take me a minute to get there because I'm using my computer. I have to hit these one at a time. Psalms 94 verse 11. One more. And it reads as follows in verse 11. The Lord knoweth the thoughts of man. That they are what? Vanity. Vanity. God knows your thoughts, and he knows there are no vanity. Did you hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. He knows your thoughts. He knows what you're thinking. He knows they serve no purpose. He knows they serve ungodliness. He knows they serve unholiness. He knows they serve unrighteousness. Now, notice he says the thoughts of who? You may him. Man. He knows your thoughts before you know who you were. Well, how does he know that? Because he allowed them to be there. Because a shifting has to take place in who you are. And until that shifting of who you are takes place, your mind stays the same. That's why I'll say in a minute, shift your focus back to God. Shift your focus back to the Father. The reason is because when we start looking at all other things and everything else going on, we lose focus of God. We lose, don't you know the enemy can rob you of your blessings if you lose focus? If you take your eye off of God for a minute, Satan will come in and steal and rob you of everything God promised you. And you'll be standing there dumbfounded and wondering what just happened. Verse number 5 out 12 says, Blessed is the man whom the what? Thou what? Jesus, O Lord, and teacheth him out of what? Thou laws. I know he is. But the key is this, saints, and that is that we have got to allow ourselves to be in a place where God can teach us by the law. Now, there are two laws. There's the law that governs man, the law of the world, and there's the law that governs the saints, the church, the word of God. Two laws. Blesses that man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teacheth him out of thy law. Meaning that God teaches us out of his word. The law of God is the word of God. And without the word of God, there is no law of God. Did you hear what I just said? Turn to uh, Psalms 15. I just said, Pastor, you guys go everywhere tonight, don't you? And verse number 26. It's going to take me a second to get that there with me. I'm on the way. Proverbs. Proverbs. Sing on me. Proverbs 15. Because my phone just doing all kinds of stuff over there tonight. <laughs> Proverbs 15 and 26 read this following. Let's go back one. The thoughts of the wicked are what? An abomination to the Lord. But the words of the pure are what? Pleasant words. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination unto God. But the words of a pure believer are pleasant words. So when you're wicked, you're always thinking of doing things that's an abomination. This is the reason you have to let the word of God inside you. Now, now catch this. God's word shifts you. God's word changes you. God's word molds you. God's word makes you who you are as a believer. You grow more and more and more when you read the word of God. But when the word of God is not inside of you, I'll tell you what. Take one of your relatives. Try this. Stay in God's word and get one of your relatives and just have a regular conversation. And the difference in the conversation will be like night and day. Especially if they're negative. Because you see things from the blessed, positive, word of God perspective, and they see things from always me. 
Everybody is against me. Everybody's fighting me. Everybody hates me. Y'all don't love me. Have anybody ever heard that? You know what I'm talking about, right? You, you know. Amen. You understand, right? Because this is family. That's who they are. But when God's word getting inside of you, all the things that you once spoke and said, the word and the knowledge of God changes your mindset. And when it changes your mindset, you speak positive. Because God gives you a new language. Did you catch what I just said? He gives you a new language. And the language that he gives you is a language that is the word of God, that is sound doctrine, that when you release that word, it will bring deliverance in your life. So it doesn't matter what the landlord says. Doesn't matter what the rich people say. Doesn't matter what Duke Powell says. When you use sound doctrine, sound doctrine will work. When you say, Father, your word says in the time of trouble to call on you, God, I am calling on you, and I'm trusting in your word, and I know that your word will stand, so your word says heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word is going to stand. Yeah. And guess what? God says, hello. Here am I. What's the problem, son? We'll do this, 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 and this. And if you follow the instructions, you walk out with victory. Follow what a lot of believers. We refuse to follow the instructions. We refuse to do it the way God says do it. We go around and around and around in circles. When we can get it wrapped up the first time, turn the Proverbs to 23rd chapter. Just a few chapters from where you are. Look at verse number 7. 23 and 7, did you have it? Amen. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You see that? Mm -hmm. Whatever you think, that's what you become. If you say, I'm broke, you're broke. Because all your spirit knows how to be. It's broke. Because that's coming from your heart. That's coming from your spirit. That's coming from the spiritual side of who you are. I was in the store the other day, and I was talking to a young lady, and she said, I stay broke all the time. I said, honey, don't say that. <laughs> Praise my hands, so he, he, you talk like that. You don't care, you're about 20-something years old. I stay broke all the time. Oh, please don't say that in front of me. That's insulting my intelligence. Why? Because you don't have enough wisdom to speak what you want. So what you want, what you don't want, let me rephrase that. What you don't want is what you speak. And what you don't want is what you get, because that's what you speak. When you say what you don't want, what you don't want has power over what you want. Because you're not speaking what you want. You're speaking what you don't want. And what you don't want says, hello. I ain't got no money. I know you ain't, because I'm here. <laughs> you, you calling it forward. Do you understand what I'm saying? You really calling it forward. Because you're giving it power and authority to come forth because you're speaking it. Speak that thing that is not as though it was. So when you say, I don't have, I don't have shows up. When you say, I don't have enough, I don't have enough shows up. But the laws of God says that God says, press down, shake it together, and run over shall men give it to my bosom. I call for money from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I believe the impossible is possible. I don't know where it's coming from, but your word says, God, that I have the authority to call it forth, and I'm speaking that thing that is not as though it was, and I'm decreeing it back against it. Amen. And on your door comes a little knock. In your mailbox comes a little letter. Amen. Here comes sister so-and-so and so said, the Lord said, bless you with such and such. Guess what? When you obey God, and I'm telling you things, I know what I'm talking about. I sowed a seed in the offering this morning. Before I got out of church, what I sowed was given right back to me. Before I walked out the door. Do you hear what I'm saying? Before I walked out the door, what I sowed in the offering was put right back in my hand within one hour. So I know when you speak God's word, he will honor his word. He'll do just what he said. But you've got to be willing to stand on it. 
and I'm making sense of you today. Amen. Two more words and I'm finished. <laughs> oh, amen, I got it. Thank you, Jesus. I got that. Let me go back to mine, because I want you to catch this. This is the one I did not give you, I believe. Yeah, this is the one I didn't give you. Mine. To remember, number one, to attend to closely. Now, this is a different mind. This is a mind mind. You know what I tell you, children? You got a mind, you boy. In other words, although you have a mind, you have to listen to your mind. But now, the mind that you want to listen to is the mind of the Word of God. That's why I'm giving you this mind. Because this mind teaches you that you need to be more attentive to the Word and the voice of the Holy Ghost. And when the Word and the voice of the Holy Ghost says move, you move. So let me help you with your mind. It needs to become aware of. Have you ever became aware of the Word of God when God tells you something through the mind of the Word? Wow, Lord, I wasn't even aware that you could move like that. But because you became aware of what the Holy Spirit was saying to you, and then one says, notice to regard with attention. Have you ever paid attention when the Holy Spirit was speaking to you through the Word? Have you ever paid attention when the mind of God himself through the Word of God was speaking to your spirit man? We don't do that. We see this as a natural mind, but you got to shift your focus and see it from the spiritual perspective. It says here, consider important. you got to consider what the Holy Ghost is saying to be important. Most believers don't consider what the Holy Ghost is saying to be important. They don't pay him no attention. And when he come and leave, they say, oops, I missed it. To give heed, sometimes you have to give heed. The Holy Spirit will give you heat. Have you ever gotten a warning from a pastor, from a prophet? Don't do that. Please don't do that. Don't move this way. Please don't move this way. But we do what? We do it in spite of. But we got to give heed to the Holy Spirit. We have got to, um, uh, let's say, in order to obey. So see, when you give heed, you can obey. To follow the order or instructions of. How many times God has given you something, instructions and told you to do it a certain way? And you did it every way but the way God said to do it. We move the way we want to move and we ignore the Holy Ghost. But we've got to calm down. We've got to humble ourselves. We've got to say, now Lord, give me clarity. Sometimes when I'm sitting down and I'm looking over something, I'm observing something, I say, now Lord, show me what I don't see. Have you ever asked God to do that? Amen. Show me what I don't see. I know what I see, but what I don't see. What is it that's missing here, God? If you ask him, guess what? He'll show you what's missing. It says now, to be concerned about it. Have you ever been concerned about your assignment with God? When you let the mind of Christ be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, you should have concerns about your brothers in, in Christ. You should have concerns about the believers in Christ. To be, uh, let me see, to be courteous about. I think I said that right. To give protective care to. When you, and now this is the mind change, but this is the natural mind. But I don't want you to see what I'm reading from the natural perspective. I want you to see it from the spiritual perspective because that's when it shifts you. Now when you get to see me and listen to this, you'll be like, wow. I can know as the pastor said on that. But guess what? What I'm releasing to you is keys. And if you take these keys, they'll unlock many doors. If you take these keys, they'll work on your behalf. If you take these keys, I can assure you that you can let the mind of Christ be inside of you. And when the Holy Spirit speaks to you and you move the minute he speaks, shift and change will come. I'm going to make sense of it. Amen. Come on, let's put our hands together give him some glory. Let this man be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. Jesus and the mind of God.
Jesus had the mind of the Father. Jesus obeyed the voice of his Father. He humbled himself. He bowed down. He realized I am a king, but right now I am flesh. We got to realize that although we have authority in God, we got to humble ourselves and become a base so God can exalt who we are. Yeah, Come on, let's give him some more glory. Now, in turn our us, Father, tonight, we thank you for all that has been said. We give you glory and honor for this word tonight. We bless, we magnify, we edify, and we exalt you. Father, we ask you to take this word and plant it as a seed sown in good soil for your glory. We activate this word in the hearts and the minds of the believers tonight. That they, God, in return, receive your word in their spirit, man. And they become submissive to the voice of your word. And they allow your word to work in their lives. We ask it now in Jesus' name. Now we resist every spirit of Satan that will come against this word. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give it some glory. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He deserves all the glory. Come on, let's continue to give him praise. He deserves all the honor. He deserves all the praise. Ministries and giving into the offering. We thank you so much for your support. It really matters to us. 